Hi there, this is Valentine. The weather is getting a bit better in Germany, uh, getting some sun. As you can see in the background, I'm outside on the terrace and trying to enjoy a nice afternoon. But I still decided to create this video for you guys. And this time I wanted to talk about JVT tokens that are JSON web tokens. And I'm gonna explain you briefly what they are and how you can use them in Postman. If you're new to this channel, make sure you click this button right here to subscribe to this channel for more like this kind of videos where we talk about Postman testing, continuous integration and much more. But otherwise, let's just get started with this video. In this video, I wanted to show you how you can use JSON Web Tokens or JOT Tokens in Postman. And let's start first by first asking ourselves the question, what exactly is a JSON Web Token? And JSON Web Tokens are basically an industry standard. And this standard basically describes how you can send claims between parties. And you're probably wondering what exactly is a claim. So for example, this is a claim. In this simple JSON object, I'm claiming that my first name is John, my last name is Doe, I'm having this email address. And the problem that Jot is trying to solve is by signing this information and allowing a third party to verify that this information is authentic so that it doesn't get changed in transit. So for example, once a token is generated with this information, it should be signed so that I do not have the possibility, for example, changing from is admin false in true without the other party being able to detect that. So let's jump into Postman and make this example a bit more concrete. I've set up a local server which can work with JSON web tokens. And in this case, I'm calling the authenticate endpoint. This is a post. And in the body, I'm just sending a JSON object with my username and password. And when I submit this request as a response, I will get a JSON token. And the token is actually this weird string that you see here. So let's just copy that and better understand what exactly is going on. So I'm gonna head to jwt.io and in this editor, I'm gonna paste the value that I had. And a JSON web token is divided in three parts and each of these parts, you will see here that they have a different color and they're delimited by this dot. So the first part is just talking about what kind of a token is this and what encryption algorithm was used so that the party receiving that will be able to know, oh, this is a JOT token and this specific encryption algorithm has been used. The second part is the payload. And this is actually the claim we've been talking about. So this token says, the person who has this token is John Doe, has this email address, in, is not an admin. And additionally, it has an expire date. So this token isn't valid for like forever, but it's only valid for a limited period of time. Now, the third part, and this is the very important part of this token, is the signature itself. And the server that generated this signature and this token basically took the header took the payload, so the claim, and with a very long secret, generated a signature. And any changes to this payload will be visible because then the signature of this entire message will not be the same. And then anybody having this secret key will be able to tell that the message, the payload has been manipulated. Okay, additionally, what's important to notice is that this string is base64 encoded. And this is just a way of encoding this data. But the data is signed, the data is not encrypted. And that's a very important distinction to make there. Because this information here, if you use any base64 decoder, will be able to see it exactly in this way. So the information is, even though it looks weird, it's not encrypted, it's only encoded. Well, let's get back to our example and try to understand exactly what is going on. So as you saw, I submitted the username and the password 
to the authentication server. And the authentication server get, got back to me with this JOT token. And inside there, there are all this information about a person. So basically, the user in this case exchanged his username and password with this specific token. And any other request that will be later made to this server can include this JOT token. But what's more important is that you can go to a third party just with this token and that party should be able to tell if you're John Doe, if you are an admin and everything that you claim to be will be basically secured with the token that you are sending. So probably you're asking yourself how exactly can you send this token to other endpoints? And this can be done pretty easily. All you have to do is in your request to add an authorization header and this will be a bearer space and then you will have the token that you've got. So let me show you in Postman exactly how this looks like. So what I'm trying to do next is, is to access this restricted endpoint. And when I call it and provide no token, I will get back a status 401 unauthorized. And as I previously said, we need to add a header. Now because Postman is a bit smart, can really help a lot. And once I go to this authorization tab, I'll have the possibility of selecting from this list bearer token. And once I do that, I have this field where I can input my token that I had from the previous request. And now I can click preview request. And what Postman actually does in the background is to create this authorization header and put the information right here. So this is our JOT token and it is in the exact format that we need it. So when I'm gonna hit the send button here, we'll see that I get a status to 100 and obviously the request is successful. The token is being recognized by the server and everything is okay. Now, there's one more thing I wanted to show you in Postman in order to get things a bit more automatic. And I'm going to go to the previous request and in here you see I get a JSON back. And it would be nice to get this information from this request to the other request without doing annual, any manual copy pasting. And we can do that by using variables and there are multiple types in Postman as you probably know. In this case I'm just going to use global variables because it's much easier but you can use environment variables or anything else that you prefer. So for that, I'm gonna to go to the test tab and I'm gonna use a snippet for that. I'm gonna say set global variable. I'm gonna call it jot token. And let's see exactly what value can we put inside here. So first we have to parse the response body. And we'll get that by calling pm.response.json. And this will be our response. And directly from the response object, we're gonna take the token property. Okay, let's submit this request once again. I can inspect the global variables and you will see here that the JOT token was set. And then in the request that needs this token, I will go back to the authorization, use double curly braces and right inside here, JWT token. And you will see that a color has changed, it's being recognized as a global variable. And I can submit this request. So again, pretty simple to communicate and to get this all working in Postman. In the first request, I just exchanged this body, this username and password. I got back a JOT token. In the test tab, all I had to do is to parse the response body, extract the token from the body, set it as a global variable. And in the next request, 
I can simply use that global variable. So that's about it. I know I haven't touched a lot of the details of Jot and everything, but I just wanted to show you a very quick and easy way on how you can do that in Postman. I hope it will help you. Hope you found this tutorial helpful and if it's the case, make sure you give this a thumbs up. Otherwise, make sure you check the video description right there below because I will be posting a lot of links to other resources that can be very helpful to you. See you next time. If you want to learn more about Postman, then just click this next video.